The Music Therapy Association of British Columbia says that the emotional and expressive nature of music can serve as a bridge to self-awareness, insight, and identification of feelings. And that group music experiences do help to create a sense of community and belonging among their clients. When I hear a lyric that really relates to exactly how I've been feeling, I find I wind up listening to that song over and over and over again. And why? When I think about it, I feel like it's because when I hear it, I feel that the artist gets it and gets me and has been through what I've been through. Maybe not the exact same situation, but emotionally, we've been on the same ride. And so when I hear the song, I feel good. Hearing that artist express through their music what I couldn't say with just my words alone makes me feel less alone in my struggle. I'm going to be playing you two of my original songs today, and I hope that you all can feel connected, whether it's to me as the artist or to each other or to someone you know who isn't here. By listening to these songs and feeling your emotions, these two songs in particular were written at a time when I was struggling with my mental health, in particular with anxiety. The first song is called Ghost. What do we think of when we hear the word ghost? Invisible, maybe scary, haunting. Not everyone believes in them. They're not real to a lot of people, so they are discredited, justified as other things, like the wind. Not everyone would want to believe, they, would want, they wouldn't want to deal with thinking that ghosts are real, right? For one reason or another, I'm willing to bet that we all have felt a little like a ghost at some point in our lives. Maybe on purpose, because we hide rather than expose ourselves to the judgments and the stigmas that are attached to so many things. And I'm going to be focusing on mental health because 20 minutes is not enough time to touch on every subject that is still misunderstood by some people in 2018. But let's take mental illness as an example. Often people who struggle are afraid to speak openly about ourselves on a daily basis for fear that we won't be taken seriously anyway that we will be discredited like a ghost is just the wind, your depression is just a bad day, your anxiety is just a fear. And we'll be told to get over it. Stop stressing. It's all in your head. You're overthinking it. It's not that hard. Just do this and you won't have this anymore. It's that simple. Just be happy. You have nothing to be depressed about. So many people have it worse than you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, we may try to hide the severity of our emotions, we may even be afraid of the severity of our emotions because we think that others are afraid too. We treat our mental illness like a ghost that can't be seen and that no one wants to see anyway. But why do we hide? Why should we hide? People will form their own conclusions, often based on uneducated opinions rather than facts. And when that happens, and ignorance is directed at people, it can be so harmful. I feel like if we talked more openly about these kinds of things that are misunderstood, maybe we would all learn to accept each other, which would make it easier to accept ourselves. I feel like it makes us lighter and happier when we stop trying so hard to be invisible. And I just hope that we can reach a day where nobody feels like it's necessary to hide anymore. This song is called Ghost.
Thank you. My next song for you today is called Arizona, and it was written after about a year of some extremely dark thoughts. Our brains can convince us of many terrible things. They can convince us that we are alone, that our best friends and our family don't actually care about us. They can convince us that we should panic over making a simple phone call to someone we know and trust because dialing that number and imposing on someone will make them hate you if they don't secretly hate you already because it makes sense to you that someone could easily decide that they hate you because you feel worthless. Our brains can convince us that we should doubt ourselves to the point where it cripples our everyday lives, doubt the words that come out of our mouths, our interactions with people, and how we're perceived. Our brains can convince us that we are angry, enraged over nothing, that we have an anger problem, when in fact it's our body's response to the feeling of anxiety, a fight or flight reflex. Our brains can convince us that we're feeling physical pain, symptoms that aren't there. A panic attack has taken me to urgent care once. I thought my throat was closing in and I couldn't breathe, when in fact nothing of the sort was physically happening to me. And while these thoughts consume you, it can be alarmingly easy to believe them and also to believe that you may never make it out of this place in your mind. That it somehow defines you, that it's just how things are now, that you're broken and can't be fixed. But it's really important to know that there are ways to make it out. Talking with a support system, seeking help from doctors and licensed therapists and psychiatrists, sometimes medication, physical activity, in my case, music, all of these are strategies that can be useful. Maybe there's no magic cure or one right answer for these kinds of things. But one way or another, there are ways to find light in a dark spot. And these strategies will help you learn about your mental health, which is so important, because the more you learn, the better able you will be to cope with it. Mental illness doesn't have to be the destination. It's just one place you've been. This is Arizona. Look up at the night sky But this desert so dry Darken up the satellites Watch them with the naked eye I was stranded Thirsty for answers Thank you very much. 
I hope that these songs could reach you in some way today, and if they did, we know just as humans sitting in a room together of all different backgrounds and who all struggle in our own way, how listening to music and talking about song meanings may make us feel, how it may help us relate. And I want to leave you with how music can help us heal, specifically how music therapy is used as an excellent tool in the treatment of mental disorders such as anxiety disorder, personality disorder, substance abuse, and more. Again, the Music Therapy Association of British Columbia says that structured activities like group singing and instrument playing can reach in and make contact with even some of the most severe cases of mental illness. It can help people focus and express their feelings. And with higher functioning mental disorders, as I've already touched on, it can help bring our unconscious emotions to the forefront and promote self-esteem and health and well-being. Just a few of the ways that music can be utilized in these ways is through singing, meditation, lyrical analysis and discussion, and songwriting. And the songwriting for me has been one of the most therapeutic things in my life. As much as I write songs in the hopes that other people are going to hear them and feel understood, I also write to try and understand myself. And these songs in particular today were actually written with other people and in and of itself, that was a collaborative and supportive experience for me, especially talking about these subjects. Here's my final thought for you. I was recently reading an article from the Greater Good Science Center at Berkeley, and in it they cited a study where participants were hooked up to an fMRI machine, and they listened to a piece of music. Some were told it was composed by a human, and others were told it was composed by a computer when in fact it was the exact same piece of music. For those who were listening to music that they thought was composed by a human, there was an area of their brain linked to empathy that lit up, while it did not light up for those who thought they were listening to music composed by a computer, which suggests that when we hear music, we're not just processing the sounds, but we're actually trying to understand the intent of the musician as a fellow human being and what they're trying to communicate. So if music ignites our empathy, even more than just utilizing it in our own personal healing and coping, I want to continue to use music even more so than it already has been, and I want to personally use mine to help create a lasting dialogue about mental health or anything that comes with a stigma attached so that maybe the message can reach more people, help them learn and understand, and in the end, hopefully, have some more empathy for all people in this world. Thank you.